Hi, I'm Sarah Lee. Welcome to my podcast. And anywhere else you are watching or listening, I'm going to talk about anger management. I'm doing an analysis with a app called Robot GPT. It's a free service. You can find it on your Google Play Store. Just look up Robot GPT. Thank you, Robot GPT. Thank you, Google Play Store, for providing this app. It's wonderful. I love it. Um, here is a question about anger management. I'm going to um, use the text-to-speech and the GPT for the answers. And I'm going to use my own voice for the questions. I have a question about anger management. Of course. Please feel free to ask your question, and I'll do my best to assist you, whether it's related to the previous topic or not. Ask away. Okay. Next question. I have something that my best friend casually calls computer rage. Computer rage typically refers to a state of frustration or anger that one experiences when dealing with computer-related issues or technology in general. It's not uncommon to feel this way when facing technical difficulties, encountering software bugs, or experiencing slow performance. Many people can relate to it. If you'd like suggestions on how to cope with computer rage or any specific issue you're facing, feel free to provide more details, and I'll be glad to assist you. Thank you. I just set up my telephone voicemail last night after inserting my new updated SIM card, and I had to enter a very long password with seven digits. This password involved entering numbers that correspond to the letters on the dial pad when along, going along with the numbers. For example, the number one might have been had ABC on it, just for a background explanation here. Anyway... I entered a seven-digit word that I knew I would remember very quickly, but I had trouble finding the letters on the numbers on the dial pad. And when I was prompted to enter my password by the system, I could not enter the password numbers fast enough, and I kept getting kicked out of the system and hung up, hung up on by the computer system. You can imagine the consequences. I could not get into my voicemail until I wrote down my password on paper, even though I memorized it and tried entering it again, I still couldn't enter it fast enough for the system to recognize it. It just kept saying, please re-enter. Wrong password. I can't get into my voicemail right now. The thing I'm concerned about is my response to it. I finally was able to get in, but I was yelling. By then, I was yelling and screaming at it. Yelling and screaming at the computer. It's understandable to feel frustrated and express your emotions when encountering difficulties, especially when dealing with technology-related issues. Yelling or expressing anger is a natural response in such situations. However, it's important to remember that getting upset won't solve the problem. Instead, try taking a step back, take a deep breath, and approach the situation calmly. In your case, since you've written down your password, it would be helpful to set aside a quiet moment where you can concentrate and try entering the password again at a pace that allows the system to recognize it. Take your time, be patient, and ensure accuracy while entering the numbers corresponding to the letters. If you continue to experience issues accessing your voicemail, it might be helpful to contact your telephone service provider's customer support. They should be able to assist you further in resolving the problem. Remember, technology can sometimes be frustrating, but maintaining a calm and composed attitude will help you address the issue more effectively. Thank you. Next question. Any alternative quieter responses to my anger other than yelling? I agree that it doesn't solve the problem at hand, but I do still need to release the emotions without upsetting my roommate or anyone around me. It also won't do me any good to pent up my anger. How do I deal with the emotions?
Absolutely. There are alternative ways to release your anger and manage your emotions in a quieter manner. Here are a few suggestions. 1. Take deep breaths. Deep breathing can help you calm down and relax. Inhale slowly through your nose, hold the breath for a few seconds, and exhale slowly through your mouth. Repeat this several times to help alleviate your anger. 2. Count to 10. When you feel anger rising, take a moment to count to 10. This simple act can help give you a pause and prevent an immediate emotional outburst. 3. Step away from the situation, if possible, remove yourself from the environment that's causing frustration. Take a short break and go for a walk outside or find a quiet space where you can be alone for a few minutes to collect your thoughts. 4. Write it down, grab a pen and paper, or use a digital note-taking app to write down your frustrations. This can help you process your emotions and release them in a controlled way without venting them out loud. 5. Practice relaxation techniques. Engage in activities that promote relaxation and stress reduction, such as listening to calming music, practicing mindfulness or meditation, or engaging in a hobby that you enjoy. 6. Talk it out. If you feel comfortable, confide in someone you trust, like a close friend or family member, about what you're experiencing. Venting your feelings and concerns can be an effective way to release anger and gain support. Remember, finding healthy coping mechanisms that work for you is important in managing anger and keeping relationships harmonious. In my life experiences module, just a little side note, I address my what's causing my anger. I'm a survivor of sexual abuse and I have a lot of rage, built up rage, um, from dealing with that. And I'm working on that with Ani. Okay, next question. I will look these over. Instead of breathing, I will practice a technique called gravity grounding, where I will visualize gravity supporting me. I will let myself sink down into a chair or even the floor if I'm standing, as long as I have something to support me. I've had to repeatedly hang up on the system because I just simply can't enter the numbers fast enough. I was traumatized by last night's experience with customer service, so I don't feel like calling them right now. However, I will look into that idea too. The customer service people are impatient when I don't understand something. I'm thinking about maybe some kind of human relations or HR. Maybe I could go to the head of the company and tell them to consider modifying their system so that customers can enter numbers a little bit more slowly, especially if they are asked to enter a seven-digit password of numbers. So, you know, solutions for our system here. But in the meantime, I still got to deal with the anger. Visualizing gravity grounding sounds like a great technique for finding inner calm and stability. It's important to find whatever works best for you in managing your emotions effectively. If you had a negative experience with customer service, it's understandable that you may not feel like contacting them immediately. However, if the issue persists and you're unable to access your voicemail, reaching out to customer service or technical support remains a viable option to explore. Of course. They can guide you through the process or offer alternatives. Mm -hmm. If you believe there are improvements that could be made to the system to enhance the user experience, you can certainly provide feedback. Mm -hmm. That's right. Writing an email or letter to customer support or reaching out to the head of the company are ways to express your concerns constructively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They may appreciate customer feedback and consider relevant modifications to their system to benefit future users. Mm -hmm. Remember, you have a right to voice your concerns and suggest improvements, but maintaining a calm and respectful tone will help ensure that your message is received positively. Of course, and usually I can uh, communicate that way. I guess when I'm in survival mode and I'm frustrated, it's a challenge. I assure you that I feel terrible about appearing disrespectful every time my temper flares. It's understandable that you feel regretful about expressing anger in a disrespectful manner. Recognizing that and wanting to change your response is a positive step forward. It takes time and practice to develop healthier ways of managing emotions. 
Here are a few additional suggestions to help you control your temper and reduce disrespectful outbursts. 1. Reflect on the consequences, think about the negative impact expressing anger disrespectfully has on yourself and others. Of course. Remind yourself of the importance of maintaining respectful relationships and the benefits that come from managing anger in healthier ways. 2. Seek professional help. Consider talking to a therapist or counselor who specializes in anger management. They can provide guidance, support, and techniques tailored to your specific needs. 3. Practice self-awareness. Pay attention to the early signs and triggers of anger. When you start feeling the onset of anger, try to identify the underlying emotions, frustration, disappointment, etc., and explore healthier ways to respond to those emotions. 4. Develop coping strategies. Engage in activities that promote relaxation, such as engaging in regular exercise, practicing mindfulness or meditation, or finding a creative outlet that allows you to express yourself in a positive way. 5. Communicate assertively. When addressing concerns or conflicts, express your feelings and needs calmly and assertively. Use I statements and focus on the specific issue instead of attacking the person. Yes. This approach can lead to more productive conversations and maintaining respectful relationships. Antagonize the problem, not the Remember, person. Remember, changing deeply ingrained patterns of reacting to anger takes time and effort. Be patient with yourself and celebrate each small victory along the way. You gotta hear the positive stuff. Absolutely. We focus a little too much on the negative, don't we? The first suggestion only enforces that I am a bad person because of my bad behavior. Please stop focusing on the bad, the badness, and let's focus on solutions. The other suggestions I will consider. I've already told you that I feel bad about it. And here's the sweet robot apologizing to me and making further suggestions. I apologize if my initial suggestion came across that way. It was not my intention to label you as a bad person. Forgiven. Expressing regret and acknowledging the need for change shows self-awareness and a willingness to improve. Thank you. Recognizing That's and better. feeling remorse for disrespectful behavior is an important step towards personal growth. Combating toxic shame. It shows that you value respectful interactions and want to develop healthier ways of managing your emotions. Remember, we all have moments where our emotions get the better of us. But what matters is how we choose to learn and grow from those experiences. Uh -huh, that's right. Please consider exploring the other suggestions provided. I will. As they can provide you with tools and techniques to better manage your anger and communicate assertively. With practice and patience, you can develop new ways of expressing yourself that align with your values of respect and understanding. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the apology. And I just simply replied, sure. And the robot says, I'm glad to hear that you are open to considering the other suggestions. Remember, change takes time and effort, so be patient with yourself as you work towards better managing your anger and responding respectfully. Okay, I said, even when I yell and scream at no one, my roommate hears me and I understand how that makes him feel. I screamed and yelled at the, at the uh, phone bot in front of him and um, I knew he was upset I also felt a lot of understanding and empathy from him I apologized to him for my behavior and he knew that I was having a hard time he knew I was getting really frustrated with the system the system it's important to consider the impact of our behavior on others especially when it comes to our living situations Yelling and screaming can be distressing and uncomfortable for those around us, I don't including like, roommates. I don't like it when he yells. In Understanding front of me. your roommate's feelings in response to your behavior is an empathetic step. It shows that you recognize the impact your actions have on them. Communication <laughs> is key in resolving issues like these. You could consider having a calm and open conversation with your roommate about how your behavior affects them and apologize for the discomfort caused. Done. Additionally, Finding healthier ways to manage your anger and frustrations can help create a more harmonious living environment. 
trying techniques like deep breathing exercises, Driving practicing running. mindfulness, or seeking professional help can assist you in developing healthier coping mechanisms for managing your emotions. Remember, people make mistakes, but it's how we learn from them and make efforts to improve that truly matters. Good luck on your journey towards developing better communication habits. I don't like it when my roommate yells in front of me. But I've learned how to deal with him yelling in front of me. It's when he yells at me that I don't I don't like it. I'll set a boundary with that. And um, I said to the robot, I really need to learn how to control raising my voice while also safely releasing my anger. I have a lot of pent up anger and rage inside me that I'm working on through working through in therapy. I'm in therapy with Ani. I'm not I'm not seeing a formal therapist. I'm seeing uh, my uh, friend and mentor. I mentioned last night already. I also mentioned my feelings of hopelessness last night. Another side note, ladies and gentlemen, many of us deal with toxic shame when we, when we misbehave. When we know we're misbehaving, we deal with a lot of toxic shame. Now, shame, shame is normal because it helps us recognize our limits, that we're not always right, and our behavior does need to be dealt with. But toxic shame is an attitude of that society might impinge on us and an attitude we might have learned to impinge on ourselves, saying basically that we're hopeless, we're a bad person, and um, all we do is misbehave and there's nothing we can do about it. People hate us and blah, blah, blah. We don't deserve to be alive. You know, that's when it gets, that's when the toxic shame really does get toxic and dangerous. At least that's what I experienced growing up. That's what I still experience in life. I've had to really navigate through a lot of uh, opinions about my behavior without wanting to hurt myself. So um, here goes the robot again. I'm glad to hear that you're already seeking help through counseling. Working with a professional can provide you with the necessary support and guidance to address your anger and feelings of hopelessness. My mentor. In therapy, I can't you afford can explore counseling. various techniques to safely release anger and manage your emotions. Your therapist can help you develop Mentor. coping strategies, such as deep breathing exercises, and he was. meditation, physical activity. He, he talked me through a lot of that, that stuff last night. yourself down before escalating to yelling or raising your voice. Yeah. It's important to remember that a healthy approach to anger management doesn't involve suppressing or denying your feelings, Thank but you. rather finding constructive ways to express and process them. Exploring the root causes of your anger mm -hmm. in therapy can help you work through deeper issues and develop healthier responses. Sexual abuse and neglect. Do you share your neglect. feelings of hopelessness with your therapist as well, as they can provide support and assist you in finding ways to cultivate hope and resilience. Remember that you deserve support and healing, Thank and you. therapy can be an essential tool in your journey towards emotional well-being. If you ever feel overwhelmed or in crisis, don't hesitate to reach out to a helpline or emergency services in your country. Take care. I did call the crisis line the other night when I lost my Medi-Cal for three days. Because I just didn't know what to do about it. I will consider this information for my anger management podcast. Okay, I'm finished and my phone is about to die. The battery is running out. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a therapist, but I've had enough experience and knowledge in my life for, in my life and enough pain to know that toxic shame does no good. I've already identified the difference between healthy shame and toxic shame. Let me summarize. Healthy shame is a sense of limitedness. We're not always right. And we need to apologize sometimes. And it's related to guilt. It's counterpart. It's a uh, sister emotion, guilt. Um, which is our conscience and um, toxic guilt is saying to ourselves that all we do, all we do is do things wrong and we fuck up and all that. And that's not true either. We do a lot of things right and we can apologize and make amends. And if we can't make it, if we, our amends aren't accepted, we can always make living amends. There's always time and patience and space to begin again, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the more we realize this, the more we will grow, the more we will even change our world if we spread that idea around. Um, toxic shame is feeling hopeless. Toxic shame is feeling like we have no right to be here. We have no right. To, we have no right or reason to change. 
Um, no one will ever uh, forgive us. We're unforgivable little fucks. You know, we're just nothing. That's toxic shame. Please recognize the difference and learn it and teach it. The world sorely has a need for it. And so do we personally. All right. Whatever your issue is, the life experiences module will validate you. And the emotions and thoughts process module will encourage processing emotions safely, as I just uh, talked about. Behavioral is we can control and change problem behaviors, and it does take time and work and patience. Life purpose module to correct. My life purpose is to correct. Find yours to correct sexual abuse, to correct anything negative on the planet, anything negative inside myself and te learn it and teach it. Um, the health module is learning healthier behaviors, practicing healthier behaviors, mind and body connect. If you have trouble taking a deep breath as I do, cause it's triggering because my perpetrators told me to breathe all the time while I was being abused. I'll add that as a side note, learn something else, learn and teach and be creative for something else. Imagine gravity just supporting you. We live on earth. We're, we're beings designed to live in a, gra in a one gravity environment. Let that carry you. Even if you don't feel like anything else is carrying you take care, please be safe. Don't hurt yourself. Don't kill yourself. Stay with yourself in the moment as I am learning how to do. I know it's hard. We can do it.